So I can't wait for season two because season one left us hanging. <laughs> <laughs> I had to put that in there, by the way. Uh, but Casey and Monica are like a modern day Romeo and Juliet, uh, Juliet, you know, with the forbidden love from two different worlds, except they haven't died and they have a son. How does this, you know, work out in season two? Does it become more complicated, especially with their son? Yeah, it's a sequel, Shakespeare sequel. Yeah. Um, yeah, it does become more complicated and you see them kind of uh, navigate life on their own and and yeah, how to and what that means of, you know, raising a son um, from, from, you know, two different worlds. Yeah, and I think uh, like watching watching people who are incredibly in love kind of be torn apart by things that maybe aren't always their fault, you know, and, and two people who who would who want to be together um, and just because of their situation can't be and uh, you know I think for Casey there's there's so much that's go that, that is going on with him he's such a broken human uh, in ways that he doesn't understand um, which makes him sort of impossible to be with I mean he's putting their kid in danger and all of them in danger really so trying to watch this guy confront himself and uh, and find out how he could maybe be deserving of of her again since the last time uh, from the western state of Texas in Highwaymen to now the TV series Yellowstone, you've eaten a lot of western dust, haven't you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, I always seem to go back for more. I, I, like, I, like the, uh, I like the land when it looked like that. Your character in Yellowstone, John Dutton, in your opinion uh, from his backstory and everything, do you think he looks upon Yellowstone, the ranch itself, as an empire or just as a cowboy working ranch? I think I think it's a, uh, I think it's both, and he's, he's complicated it because it is he's treating it like an empire that it has to be uh, defended, fought over, and in in terms that sometimes are outside my the where I the way I would conduct myself. But mm -hmm. um, you know, so then. You know, he wants the simple life, but it's been absolutely complicated by decisions that have been made, both by his children and, and the forces coming at him and how he's chosen to react to them. Congratulations on the success of season one. Now, in season one, we see this crazy relationship between your characters, Beth and Rip. Uh, where do we see it heading in season two? Oh, well, we're in a different kind of territory, actually. Taylor Sheridan, who wrote and created the show, sort of explores a little bit more of the nuances of their souls and hearts together. It's a little more, uh, less crazy, I think, and we go back to when they first met. Um, it's the beginnings of them, and so which also tells us a lot about their relationship. But um, there's a lot of um, questions and s scenes and uh, sort of themes of loyalty in mm -hmm. season two. Yeah. And they're most loyal to each other, it would seem. Yeah. Yeah, it's... Yeah, I think Taylor did a great job of, you know, putting us more together, not just as a, as a relationship, but also as souls, you know. So he, he really kind of, he dove into her heart really at its essence, you know, with Rip and vice versa. And I think, you know, you get to kind of, you know, as an audience, you get to gaze into that world that I don't think they would ever show anybody else other than each other. Yes, right. I'm looking forward to seeing yeah. that. Yeah, <laughs> it's a great love story. I love yeah. it. Yellowstone deals with uh, families, ranches, land ownership, conflicts with indigenous people, guns. But in what ways is Yellowstone different from the old traditional westerns? Hmm. Well, it's you know it's modern day. You know it's it, you know it still has the same problems as the, as the westerns that we grew up with. Um, this one happens to have a couple extra really great things. It has Taylor Sheridan's words and it has Kevin Costner leading the, the, the march. So. Uh, for me to, to come in on season two and to be part of a show like this with, you know, actors of this caliber, with the words that Taylor gives to us, with the eye candy, the backdrop of Yellowstone and cowboy hats and horses and everything else, it's, you know, it was really, it, it's, it was a, a blast of a year for me. Now, John Dutton says something along the lines of uh, being a grandparent is good because he gets to do the things with, that he wished he had done with his own children. So, Kelsey, what does this tell us about his relationship with his family? I mean, I think that's something that Monica's always kind of on the back foot about. Mm -hmm. She just doesn't understand this family and their dynamic and, and what they're after. Um, and in a way, feels so 
isolate. I think even when she, she, she tries to be a part of the family but always kind of feels so, so isolated from them. Um, but I think, but at the same time, I think in this season, she does see that maybe maybe John and her have something in common, which is that that fight for to keep your family together. And I'm sure you've talked to other ranchers today because it is a modern contemporary western. Uh, I'm sure these people that run these big ranches, they deal with politics constantly, and the same as John. Yeah, and hopefully they're not killing people though no. at the rate that we do. But it's been good fun, so. Yeah, it's a huge undertaking to make a series like this. I thought a lot of the characters in the story itself, would you agree, Kevin, it's about survival? Yeah, I, well, I, I, everybody wants a place, you know, you want a place. You've carved a place out for yourself in life and, and certainly a, in family, it's almost biblical that sons try to find what their place is. And, and my daughter, who's, you know, very smart, and, but has lost, you know, a guiding force in her life, her mother, has been fending kind of for herself and is kind of on the wrong track where men's concerned also. She's kind of a man-eater, mm -hmm. if you will, but very smart and, you know, I have to take a level of responsibility there and having not been able to either slow things down or make them right by her. But ultimately, as an, as a, an adult, you have to take responsibility for yourself too. And Luke, you're acting in, in so many subtle ways. It shows how Casey is torn between, you know, these two worlds and trying to live up to everyone's expectations, but also feeling like, you know, he doesn't belong fully in either. Mm -hmm. Does this impact him more in season two or is there hope of some sort of resolution? Well, I think he goes into season two pretty determined to, to make a choice. Mm -hmm. And you kind of see that at the end of one. He's like, I'm back and I'm going to do what it takes. I remember when I read that, I didn't, it felt so uncasey to me. Mm -hmm. And then I talked to Taylor and he's like, well, he's doing it for Tay. Mm -hmm. Everything he's doing now, because his, the thing that he cared about the most is gone. So, and he was already on, you know, kind of on the edge of, of sanity, really. Um, and so I think he, he's made a big decision to try to protect the future of this ranch and help his dad and, and try to one day take it over and run it so that his son has a life, you know, beyond his own. I love the video online that has Beth Dutton's top 10 Beth Burns. Uh, have you seen it? No. Oh, the, my favorite one, I can't repeat in this interview. I haven't seen it either. What, what is it's it? It's incredible. It counts down from 10. And it also... It's what, how she destroys people? Yes, her burns. Yes. <laughs> I've never even heard of this before. So what, You, you have to check it out. Okay. So, uh, one of my favorites, though, as well, is where she says, that's really deep, Jamie. Uh, you must have been watching TED Talks. Yeah. <laughs> but this shows us, you know, Taylor's writing and his yeah. understanding of different women's psyche. That's what right. is it like working with him? Well, I'm glad you brought that up because so many people are into like strong women and we have to have like role models which I absolutely agree with but I also want to see real women mm -hmm. flawed women powerful women messy women mm -hmm. pa you know passionate women and that's what Beth is to me um, so I think that's why she's resonated so deeply in some sort of psyche in America because she's badass and she, she doesn't edit herself mm -hmm. and you know there are such those wicked one-liners or like when I read them on the page I'm just like I can't believe I'm lucky enough to yeah. get to do this. She looks like a delicious character. She is delicious. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And Gil, we see Native Americans still on, uh, uh, still on reservations, but we've got developers moving in, and then we've got John Dutton uh, defending what he regards to be his heritage and dynasty. So in what ways does this series deal with the concept of land ownership? I think it depends on what the, um, the viewpoint of ownership of land. I mean, the Dutton's family has owned this land, I don't know, maybe 100 years, 150 years but the indigenous people were on this land for 10,000 years. So the, the way that history has portrayed, you know, the acquiring of that land has been so distorted. Mm -hmm. And it's really at, at the foundation of what Thomas Rainwaters is trying to accomplish, you know, and he's gonna try to learn the game as, as it's been played out, as it's been laid out, and, and, uh, and try to retrieve that land back. And John has the responsibility of not only this huge ranch, which you could put, probably put Rhode Island inside, <laughs> is it the largest ranch supposedly in America? Right. Yeah. Um, the responsibility as a father of the relationships with his children. 
Right. And, and, and he hasn't managed that, uh, that well, to be honest. There's this kind of tough love that used to go, and that, that hasn't really worked here. And, and people are more complicated, and you have to have a level of empathy. And if you don't, this is, that's the price of it. And Cole, your character is very uh, confident in the saddle. So were you experienced rider before you worked on Yellowstone? No, I mean, I was kind of one of those weekend warriors, you know, that goes on a vacation and jumps on a horse. But, you know, Taylor did a wonderful thing for me and he put me on every saddle, every horse. And he told me, look, as soon as you get comfortable, I'm gonna switch you up and put you on something else. And I really learned, you know, at hyper speed because of that. So over season one, really, you know, it was just put him on everything and anything. And, you know, and if he's uncomfortable, I like it, you know. And so that really got me to find my seat as a, as a rider. And then when I found that, it's kind of like riding a bike. I mean, you just, you jump on anything and it's just it's easy. It's kind of like that with the, the acting as well. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, don't get comfortable. <laughs> right, right. He doesn't like that, actually. No. <laughs> and, Wes, what is Jamie's, uh, what's, what's his uh, goal in all this conflict? That's a good question. Um, I'm not sure Jamie is fully aware what his real goal is. I think on the surface, Jamie's goal is um, adoration, respect um, from his family, uh, some, some praise for, for doing the hard work he does and some acknowledgement that he has a big hand in it even staying in the family's name as of now, which no one seems to want to acknowledge. So Jamie's out on a search for that recognition. He wants to try and use the leverage he thinks he has to um, to force that in anyone's view. I mean, that's Jamie's concern in anything he does, really. It's just attention from his father. Finally, I love how Taylor uses the backdrop almost like a character in its own. So what is it like filming in Utah, Montana, and especially on a Native American reservation? I mean, it's a dream. I was saying, you know, I live in New York and Luke lives in LA, so it's a, it's a really nice balance. We get to spend four months out of the year there. Mm -hmm. and, um, and no, and especially, I mean, the Crow Nation has been incredible. And um, and you know and there's there's bits and pieces that we get to bring into the season like the Crow Rodeo or the Indian Relay, which is really cool. I had a little role with Lee Marvin in Monty Walsh. I also was in Bonanza, uh, and I know that how hard it is to make these. Do you enjoy that? The, you know, going on the set and doing this. I enjoy the Western uh, so much, um, and I know that when it's done right, it lives forever. Yes, it does. Thanks to great acting with like an actor like yourself, and it's always just so so wonderful to talk to you, Kevin. Thank you. Taylor. Well, and finally, I love how Taylor uses the environment as another character. Just quickly, what is it like shooting in Montana and Utah? We it's wanna, it's yeah. it's a complete joy and gift yeah. to be there. I mean, it is like you said, another character, the main character. Yeah. I think so. It just it's yeah. it's amazing. We're very lucky. And Neil, excited to have you on season two. What can you tell us about your character? I think he's going to be a heavy hitter. Like I said, he's the hero of the season. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, he's, yeah. But he, he really does. He thinks that you know, what he does is everything is right and just. And you know, they own 300 casinos in, in Montana, you know, gas station casinos. And, he, and you know, when Thomas Rainwater and company decide that they're going to help build a casino and, and take away from my business, that obviously is going to not make me happy. So I come to them like a man straight up and say, we can do this all together. And when they say, nope, we're doing it our way, well, all hell breaks loose. And, um, the things that I do to put my point across is is pretty dramatic and, and awful and fantastic at the same time. It's disgusting. It's wonderful. It's great television. <laughs> it's, it's great it's television. Beautiful. <laughs> well, I can't wait for season two to start. Thank you so much for talking to you guys. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Hey You Guys. Hey You Guys, huh? Hey you guys, is that yeah. from the Goonies? It is indeed, yeah. Nice. Hey You Guys.